All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the town board meeting for December 26th, 2017. Merry Christmas. Uh, this is the Osney Town Board's last meeting of 2017, so please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go into our roll call. Oh. Councilwoman Dettori? Present. Councilman Wilcher? Present. And Supervisor Levenberg? Present. All right, we're starting tonight with a public hearing on property assessed clean energy and financing uh, associated with it and local law revisions. May I have a motion to open this public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So we are now in our public hearing. Um, you may recall that a few weeks back, this board was visited by Mark Teal King, who's the executive director of Energize New York, the Energy Improvement Corporation. Um, and he was discussing changes to legislation on the state level that took place this past year that will allow us um, in our local municipalities to offer PACE, property assessed clean energy financing, to more uh, commercial uh, properties in Ossining. Sarah Smiley, from um, who's the director of member services for the EIC, is here today tonight to join us. And I was hoping, Sarah, that you could come up to talk to us a little bit about the changes in the PACE legislation um, so that people who are watching at home could have a little understanding, and also those in the audience tonight. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak about this. Uh, as Supervisor Levenberg said, I'm Sarah Smiley, Director of Member Services for the Energy Improvement Corporation. We are the not-for-profit local development authority that the, I'm sorry, can it's you hard to hear in the mic. Can you might need just move maybe it up a touch. Take it in your hand. Yeah. Yeah, that, try it. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. Okay, cool. Ooh, oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll start again. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Sarah Smiley, Director of Member Services for the Energy Improvement Corporation. We're the not-for-profit local development authority that the town of Austin joined in November of 2012 to implement the Sustainable Energy Loan Program, which is also known as the Energi Energize New York Property Assessed Clean Energy Finance, or PACE, within the town. PACE Finance is a public benefit authorized by New York State Statute Article 5L and enabled here in the town through local law 4-2012, which was passed on November 13, 2012. PACE helps commercial and not-for-profit property owners that wish to install energy efficiency improvements and or install renewable energy with low-cost capital that is repaid on, on the tax bill for the property. In this past September of 2017, the New York State Legislature and Governor Cuomo amended Article 5L to make PACE more accessible to energy efficiency and renewable energy projects and to expand the availability of PACE to all counties of the state, including municipalities that have lower credit ratings. The amendments to Article 5L requires the town to amend the existing local law to conform to Article 5L and to amend its existing EIC municipal agreements. So that's to give you some context for it, and I'll go through what the specific amendments are. Um, so the amendments include one that allows the governing administrator to determine the maximum amount of financing that would be permitted. So this removes the 10% cap on loan to value, which had disadvantaged areas with lower property values. EIC's governing board has approved an increase to 35% cap. Uh, an amendment which will permit remote net metering and community solar projects. This will enable EIC, Energy Improvement Corporation, to develop products that distribute the benefits of solar to those who do not have the right building type for solar or those who do not want ground mount systems. It could also expand the benefits of solar across multiple sites. So this type of product would need to be approved by each municipal member before being implemented. Um, it's, the changes adopt the positive savings to investment ratio, the SIR test, used by NYSERDA in its new commercial PACE guidelines um, that requires that the estimated savings of the proposed project be greater than the costs. So this change is consistent with industry standards and with PACE programs in other states. And it's also especially beneficial to solar projects that have um, 
so that have savings that fluctuate within the first several years. Um, another change will allow the PACE charge to be added to the tax bill at the beginning of construction, uh, which is the norm in most PACE programs and standard practice for most project developers. So without the availability of PACE finance during construction, the type of projects that we were able to finance were limited to smaller projects or those where a third party was able to provide capital for financing that phase. And finally, an amendment to Article 5L allows the use of the state as well as federal sources to fund PACE reserves, which creates the opportunity for municipalities with lower credit ratings to participate in PACE. And there's a need for this, such a facility to accommodate all New York State municipalities with strong interest and those municipalities whose credit ratings may have dropped. Um, so those, are the, those highlight the amendments um, in the local law and the municipal agreement. And I just want to add that um, since PACE has become available, we now are enabled in 41 municipalities across the state, which is covering over 50% of the state's population outside of New York City. And these amendments will make the uh, financing more accessible to a greater number of projects and really maximize the, the potential of the program. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody from the board have any questions for Sarah before we continue to get comments from? Are there any comments from the public? This is a public hearing, so if anybody has any comments, questions, or anything that they'd like to add to this public hearing, please feel free to come on up. And Sarah, you can take a step aside if anybody wants to come up. And seeing nobody, Sarah, thank you very much. Huh. So I'm, I'm happy that I had the opportunity to advocate for this legislation at the state level and um, spent some time up there with uh, the, uh, the folks from um, Energize. And I think this is something that's really going to benefit all of the municipalities and it's going to put um, Energize in a, in a better position to continue to succeed and for PACE legislation to uh, be more successful throughout the state of New York. So hopefully as a result of this, we'll see more um, commercial and not-for-profit um, entities taking advantage of these benefits um, and and uh, adding these uh, ener energy improvements to their buildings, to the building stock in, throughout New York State. So without further ado, um, I would call for a motion to um, close this public hearing. If the board is so inclined, we'll plan to adopt this as local law number one of 2018 at the town's reorganization meeting on Tuesday, January 9th. Special thanks to our council for the extensive work that you did to get this local law into shape. I have a motion to, oh, I just need a regular motion, not a roll call vote, right? Okay, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Do we have any announcements this evening? I have a few. So I'm going to be talking about this more, but the past few days have been quite eventful for us in the town. After several days of spe speculation about whether anything could be done to accommodate taxpayers who wanted to prepay 2018 taxes in order to continue to benefit from provisions um, in the current tax code that allow us to um, deduct uh, our property taxes from um, from our income tax or from our income. Um, we have uh, Governor Cuomo signed an executive order on Friday evening permitting us to do just that, albeit under specific conditions. Our council, along with many in our neighboring towns, have interpreted the order to allow for the collection of taxes for which a budget has been passed and a warrant has been issued. We will talk about this later in the meeting, but please be advised that we are all feeling our way through this and are doing our best to come up with a process that allows for us to taxpayers to take advantage of this benefit, which also includes accepting partial payments, something that under normal circumstances we are not allowed to do. Thank you so much to our esteemed counsel, our tax receiver Holly Perlowitz, Assessor Fernando Gonzalez, and our town deputy comptroller Dale Ferrara for brainstorming and working to get this done right, even during our very hectic holiday weekend. In some later news, I would like to remind everyone that the town will be open on a reduced schedule again this week in observance of the holiday. Town offices will close at noon on Friday, December 29th, except for the tax office, which will remain open until 3 p.m. 
and all town offices will be closed on Monday, January 1st. At noon on the first of the year, I, along with my colleagues on the town and village of Austin, um, in the town and village of Austin, on, on boards, and county legislator Catherine Borgia, will be sworn in for our new terms at the Joseph G. Caputo Community Center. The inauguration will be followed by a reception. All are welcome. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but that is at noon on January 1st. The town and village will be back bright and early to serve you on Tuesday, January 2nd. That very evening, the town board will hold a work session at 16 Croton Avenue at 7.30 p.m. We look forward to seeing you then. We expect it to be a short meeting as we will have our annual reorganizational meeting on Tuesday, January 9th. If you've been with us before, you know we have an awful lot to prepare. In case you've missed it, the Austin Recreation Department has released the Winter 1718 brochure, which includes many new and exciting offerings in the town's own Cedar Lane Art Center. You can see the brochure on the town's website under Recreation and Parks or on the Village's Recreation and Parks Department webpage. You can also pick up a hard copy or printout from, uh, from Town and Village Hall. Finally, don't forget that January 8th is the last day to use Austin Bucks at our local businesses. You can pick up your Bucks at the Town and Village Clerk's Office or Village of Austin Village's, Village Manager's Office. Also, we have a few up in the Supervisor's Office at 16 Croton Avenue. Also, they're available at the Austin Public Library, at the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce um, Office, which is at 2 Church Street, or at the Austin Community Center. If you take advantage, you can get some great last minute deals on gifts if you haven't already done so or while you're, you're returning gifts and you want, need to buy a little something extra for yourself, make sure to take full advantage. While supporting our local businesses, we think that this is a win-win. It's a, a way to keep people turn, turning over the cars on Main Street um, and also supporting our local businesses uh, without penalizing people. And that's it for my announcements. Does anybody all right done we can go into our liaison reports does anybody have any liaison reports none then departmental reports seeing none um, we'll call for public comment on any of the agenda items they don't run um, Thank you very much for all those comments. And we're going to just move right into our board resolutions. <laughs> Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the December 11th, 2017 minutes of the regular meeting as presented. Do you have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby approves the December 19th, 2017 minutes of the special meeting as presented. Do have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby approves the voucher detail report dated December 26, 2017, in the amount of $425,955.34. Do I have a motion? Second. So even though this is the town's last meeting in 2017, the bills for uh, that year, or this year that we're in, will likely keep on coming for another month or two. Beginning in January, we will have two sets of voucher detail reports at every meeting until we can close the 2017 year, which we hope we will do sooner rather than later. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby appoints Jackie G. Shaw, Austin, to the Town Board of the Town of Austin for the first year of the four-year term left vacant by elected Town Councilwoman Kim Jeffrey, effective January 1st, 2018, at an annual salary of $11,336. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay, so Jackie, will you join me in the front of the dais? Which one am I, where am I going? Here? Just down here. Why not? Down over here. Okay. So, did I take a motion already? So, thank you. Okay. I'm over because we have the oh. camera. Okay. Um, I am thrilled to vote on this resolution tonight. We went through an interview process for this vacancy. And we met some incredibly impressive Austin residents um, who volunteered to step up to serve. 
I want to thank everyone who threw their hat in the ring. And uh, we know that as Austin residents, um, we would be lucky to be represented by any of you. However, the board chose to move forward with Jackie Shaw, taking into consideration her many years of service on the Recreation Advisory Board, as well as her thoughtful questions, her regular attendance at our board meetings, her education, um, her professional background, and her passion for our community. <coughs> I look forward to being sworn in together on Monday, January 1st, as Jackie begins her term as Austin Town Councilwoman. Please join us in welcoming Jackie. And with that, I give you this lovely town oh. pin. Thank you so much. <laughs> And I would pin you, but I'm not going to, because that would be funny. <laughs> but congratulations Thank again, so and we really look forward to having you on the town board. And then all those in favor? Oh, sorry. Let's just vote right now. So. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Yay. <laughs> Very happy. OK, congratulations again. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you on January 1st and for the rest of this meeting. <laughs> to get started it's going to take you some time to uh, whereas the u.s government has recently enacted federal legislation that may limit the amount of state and local tax deductions in 2018 and whereas governor andrew cuomo on friday december 22nd 2017 <laughs> signed executive order 172-2017 executive order which suspends the application of certain provisions contained in new york real property tax law and westchester county tax law in order to allow and facilitate partial payment of real property taxes so that those that would ordinarily be levied billed and collected in 2018 can be collected before the end of 2017 and whereas the town of austin intends to take steps to the extent permitted by existing law and the executive order Order to allow its property owners to make certain real property tax payments before the end of 2017 that would ordinarily be billed and paid in 2018. Therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby authorizes that, based on the warrant executed by the supervisor earlier today, subject to correction, for the 2018 town and town special district taxes, which are formulated from the town of Austin's 2018 budget, adopted by the town board on December 11th, 2017, the receiver of taxes is permitted to accept partial payment of real property taxes in accordance with the executive order for the purpose of making payments of 2018 town taxes before the end of 2017. And be it further resolved, the town board hereby directs the receiver of taxes to collect prepayments of 2018 town taxes in person in the receiver's office at 16 Croton Avenue, Austin, New York, during scheduled business hours <coughs> until December 29, 2017 at 3 p.m. or by mail postmarked on or before December 31, 2017. And be it further resolved that failure to make the payments before the end of 2017 will not result in a default by the property owner, and the property owner will still be able to timely pay the taxes until the applicable statutory deadline. And be it further resolved, as the town will not be able to create the 2018 tax bills prior to the end of 2017, property owners seeking to make town tax payments in accordance with this resolution are directed to tender the same amount paid in April 2017 with any appropriate adjustments to be made when the bills are issued and any overpayments will be refunded without interest. And be it further resolved, in the event a warrant is issued for the 2018 taxes by Westchester County and or the Austin School District prior to the end of 2017, the Town Board hereby authorizes the receiver of taxes to collect payment of those taxes for which a warrant was issued in the same manner as authorized for the collection 2018 town taxes set forth herein. And be it, resol be it further resolved that the Town of Austin, although proceeding with tax collection as permitted by the executive order, offers no opinion concerning the underlying legal implications or impact of the recent federal legislation. Do I have a motion? So moved. <laughs> okay. So I would like to read the statement that I released earlier today regarding this issue, which is almost as long as the resolution, um, but hopefully clarifying a couple of the points. On Friday, December 22nd, 2017, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order Number 172 uh, of 2017, which suspends the application of certain provisions contained in the New York Real Property Tax Law and the Westchester County Tax Law governing the levy and collection of real property taxes. The executive offer order, order was issued in response to federal tax law changes that will limit the amount of state and local tax deductions in 2018. As made clear in its preamble, the intent of the executive order is to facilitate 
the payment of real property taxes, including those that would ordinarily be levied, billed, and collected in 2018 before the end of this year, 2017. The Town of Austin intends to take steps to the extent permitted under existing law and the executive order to allow its property owners to make certain real property tax payments that would ordinarily be billed in 2018. Please note that these payments are limited to town and town special district taxes only. County taxes may also be included only if a county tax warrant is issued or the executive order is modified to permit prepayment without a county tax warrant. The town will monitor the situation and issue guidance as soon as it can. Please note that payment of school tax taxes to be levied in September 2018 will not be accepted before the end of this year, 2017. These taxes relate to a future fiscal year that runs from July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019, and for which a budget has not been adopted. The tax receiver will accept the second half of currently levied 2017-18 school taxes before December 31st, 2017 in accordance with standing practice and procedure. Due to the timing of the executive order, the town will not be able to issue tax bills. In order to take advantage of the executive order, property owners may tender the amount of town and town special district taxes that were paid in April 2017 and appropriate adjustments will be made when the actual bills are issued. Please note, as this is an accommodation to taxpayers with little time to prepare, any overpayment will be refunded without interest and you should consult your tax advisor as to the implications. These payments will be credited against taxes ordinarily due on April 30th, 2018. If county taxes can be included, they may be tendered in the 2017 amount as well. However, as mentioned, the ability to pay county taxes in this manner is still unresolved, unless something has changed since last I looked. Under the executive order, these taxes may be paid at the town tax receiver's office at the following times, between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. today, Tuesday, December 26th, and tomorrow, Wednesday, December 27th, between 8.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Thursday, December 28th, between 8.30 a.m. and 3 p.m on Friday, December 29th. And just a note, as I mentioned before, the tax offices are going to remain open later than the rest of town offices as a special accommodation for this particular um, executive order and al allowing people to take advantage of it. Please make note of the following. Cash payments must be in the exact amount. You will not be able to make change. All taxes should be paid by separate checks, indicating the bill being prepaid. Payments can also be sent by mail, you do take a risk when you do that. I'll let you know that. Payments to be sent to the tax receiver, provided they are postmarked as of December 31st, 2017, with a valid postmark from the U.S. Post Office or validation from an overnight carrier that is no later than December 31st, 2017. If paying by mail, please return a signed copy of this letter, which is the one that I'm reading, with your check. If you are paying in person, you will be asked to sign a copy of this letter when you submit your payment. And this letter is available on our town website right on the front page. If you escrow taxes through your financial institution or mortgage servicer, you are encouraged to contact your lender to make arrangements relative to payment of these taxes as provided in the executive order. Although the town of Austin is proceeding with tax collection as permitted by the executive offer, it offers no opinion regarding the ultimate deductibility of any taxes paid for federal or state tax purposes. Property owners should consult with their own tax professionals for guidance with regard to the federal and state tax implications associated with these payments. This is a rapidly evolving situation and the town will provide updates as warranted. So as you can imagine from that lengthy description of uh, what, where we are at and the resolution, this has been a very hectic couple of days for us in the town. I'm grateful to all of our staff and our council who got together to brainstorm the best way to get this information to our residents and make the process as user-friendly as possible given these challenging circumstances. I don't think I took a vote yet, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Or did you have any discussion or any questions? I, I didn't really have an opportunity to ask any questions. No? Okay. So you already voted? Aye. And any opposed? Thank you very much. And um, by way of adopting this resolution, we allow the executive order to be implemented in Austin.
And okay, that's the end of the town board resolutions for this evening. You have no correspondence to be received and filed, nor do you have any monthly reports. So we have visitor recognition. Is there anybody who has anything to say in the audience about anything whatsoever? Feel free to say anything nice if you'd like. Come on up. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just thought they might want to say anything. Okay. Anybody? Anybody want to say anything? Ask them. Okay. Um, just want to welcome Jackie on board. Wish everybody a very, very happy New Year. Yeah, I, I just, <clears throat> it is nice to have you on board, Jackie. And, and it's, it's amazing how long you say you've been around on these boards and I never saw you before. <laughs> I guess we're hiding, but, uh, <laughs> but welcome. You'll be first of the year. You'll be into it. Very much looking forward to it. Okay, hearing no further visitor recognition, I am going to call for a motion to adjourn into executive session for contracts. <coughs> Do I have a motion? So moved. <laughs> There's nobody to fight you on it this today, Mr. Wilson. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Attention. Thank you, everyone, for another great year in the town of Austin. I look forward to seeing you at the inauguration at noon on January 1st. Have a great night, everybody, and a happy, healthy 2018. Oh. Good night. <laughs>